Welcome everyone to Throwback Gaming's Heart of the Woods Demo Let's Play Part 3. Um, last time we arrived here and we met our guide Morgan, who was telling us a little bit about the place, and apparently the forest is haunted with some evil, well not evil, but some kind of spirit. And now she's had taken us out there to investigate, so let's jump in, shall we? We head to the appointed meeting spot right at the turn of the hour. Even during the day, the forest felt hostile and foreign. But right now, at night, it's downright scary. It's probably really cold, too. Oh, that's another thing. It's like stupid cold in this place. <laughs> Each rattle of the branch is a demon's footsteps. Ooh. Every gust of wind is a monster's breath. I stand close to Tara, treading on the backs of her feet several times. <laughs> me in real life. I think this is supposed to be the place. I look around the area. It's indistinguishable from the rest of the place. My only comfort is the tiny pinprick of light that represents our cabin, back at the, at, at the forest edge. A feeling of dread creeps its way up my spine. What if this is a trap for a setup? Maybe Morgan just lured us in the middle of nowhere and is waiting out of sight with a knife in hand or something. <laughs> yeah, Morgan's going to murder us in the middle of the woods and no one's going to know where we are. Considering we traveled thousands of kilometers to get here, if this was a trick, we fell for it hard. Maybe we're early? I know that we're not. <laughs> Tara sweeps her flashlight around, illuminating a few identical trees before the light's beam peers off into oblivion. Maybe we should just go, but... The light passes over Morgan, suddenly a meter away from us. Ah, there she is. With this little tiny sweater on when we're in the middle of, like, freezing cold temperatures. Tara jolts backwards, crashing into me. I guess it's fair since we've been stepping on her feet. <laughs> Flashlight plummets to the ground, bouncing once before stopping. I keep my balance, barely, and catch Tara's arm to stop her from falling. Are you okay? Short term, yeah, but I think I just lost 10 years. <laughs> and about you, Mats? I'm fine. What on earth were you doing? Me? I was waiting for you. Where? You didn't hear us? Just over there. Sorry, I had headphones in and missed you. Why would you have headphones in if we're in the middle of the woods? We've never been here and you're supposed to be our guide. That is unprofessional, ma'am. You were just standing in the dark in the forest wearing headphones? Oh, this is another good point. But then again, she's used to it. But I mean, this is like perfect serial killer movie stuff. She's like, oh, just a little girl in the woods, in the dark, with her headphones in. Can't hear anything. You know? <laughs> yes. Why? She's probably also really sheltered. At a loss for words, I can only shrug. Does hanging out alone in the dark in the middle of the woods not register as weird for Morgan? You just spooked us a little, is all. No worries. She stoops down and retrieves the fast light from the snow. Drying it on her sleeve, she brushes off the snow the same way she brushes off Morgan's actions. That's because she has a crush on her, that's right. She likes Morgan. Anyways, it's all good. What now? Morgan turns and faces the tree, shining her flashlight. Morgan turns and faces the trees, shining her flashlight across them. I thought we could walk around a little. It might help you get a better feel for the area. Behind Morgan's back, Tara and I exchange a look of concern. Tara gives me the slightest of shrugs. I'm still a little reluctant, but I nod. Morgan's planning to kill us. It's not much of a difference whether she does it here or in the forest, and I'm pretty sure she's not a murderer anyways. I don't know, you say that, but you're also totally convinced that she's out here to kill us. Sure, lead on. 
Morgan sets off without another word, and we just follow a couple of paces behind. Are we going somewhere in particular? Not really. I doubt you'd want to go too far this late at night, right? Right. That's fine. We'll stick to the edge, then. As we walk, Morgan keeps her flashlight pointed straight ahead in the direction that we're going. Tara, on the other hand, swings hers around, looking up at trees and out into the abyss. She and I only brought one flashlight with us. The spare is sitting in one of our suitcases back at the cabin. I regret leaving it behind, just on the off chance that we somehow get separated. Yeah, that'd be kind of bad. So, did you learn anything useful today? Not really. We went around town some, but... But most people didn't really want to talk. Yeah. How'd you know? That's how it is around here. People are mistrustful. I was kind of surprised by that. Figured with how out of the way it is here, we might have been, I don't know, treated like celebrities. Hey, now, don't project. But something like that. It's more like they isolate themselves by choice. We have internet and TV, it's just that a lot of people choose not to use them. I'm guessing they probably had some not so nice things to say about me too, right? Neither Tara did I respond. Our silence lasts a beat too long. It's okay, I'm used to it. You don't have to pretend or anything. Light shines onto our faces as Morgan turns around, half smiling. Hey, you two don't want another assistant back where you live or anything, right? Uh, funny story. Oh yeah, that's right. She quit, and now she's by herself. So that actually worked out really well. My mouth flaps like a fish while I try to think of a diplomatic response, but then Morgan laughs and face forward again. Just kidding. I don't think she was, though. We trek on in awkward silence. I'm not even sure what we're supposed to be doing or looking for. We're just wandering in the dark, trusting that Morgan knows how to get back to the cabin. It's cold and my feet are sore, and I'm once again regretting coming to Eisenfeld. I gently tug Tara's sleeve, right by her elbow. When she looks at me, I silently glare back towards where we came from and shrug, hoping she'll get the message. Now she mounts back. I nod. She gives a little worried look over towards Morgan, who's now slightly farther away. Tara holds up five fingers. Five more minutes. Sighing and not again, we hurry back up to catch up with Morgan. Something wrong? Oh no, Maddie uh, had something in her shoe. Oh. It's hard to tell if she buys it. I wouldn't. <laughs> Mentally, I'm counting backwards for five minutes, already imagining the comfort in my bed and blanket back at the cabin. How am I going to survive a whole month of this is an issue for future me to worry about. I feel that. I got lost out in this part of the forest once. 3 minutes and 32 seconds. 3 minutes 31 seconds. Don't worry though, I know my way around now. Yeah, they mentioned something about that. I step on Tara's foot again, this time on purpose. I thought they might. Her tone is still completely nonchalant. At least Morgan seems impossible to offend. It's too bad. It looks like it's going to snow tonight. We probably shouldn't stay out too late. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. I'm sorry this was so disappointing. I hope there will be more to see. What exactly were you expecting? Come on, Matt. It's about the atmosphere. The way it's way spookier out here in the dark. I know that's half the problem. We can turn back now if you like. Before I agree, Tara shakes her head. Now nah, let's give it a couple more minutes. You came out all the way here for us, after all. I glare at Tara, but I think she misses it. I've lost track of my countdown too. Whatever. The small, apologetic smile that I barely notice does little to amuse my discomfort. We trapeze aimlessly through the snow for a while longer. 
I stare at my feet more than at the path ahead and simply follow in the footsteps left behind by the other two. <clears throat> so I nearly slam into Tara, who comes at a complete halt yet again. What now? I saw something. You did. Tara, stop messing around. Let's... No, I meant it. I saw something. I shut up. I can totally tell by her tone, she, tone she's serious. She saw something, or at least she thinks she did. The three of us turn and face the way she is. It's even deeper into the forest, barely lit by the moon. There was a light. Someone else walking around? There shouldn't be anyone out at this time of night. It's dangerous to be in the woods once it gets late. I opt not to point out the obvious hypocrisy. Yeah, it's like, why are we out this late if it's dangerous? It's probably moonlight or something. It wasn't the moon, uh, Maddie. There's something out there. Oh, isn't this nice? Both of them point their flashlights in the direction Tara is looking. Aside from more trees, there's nothing to be seen. Tara. Maddie. She grins. This is what we're here for. Come on. Tara breaks into a run, leaving Morgan and I in surprise. Behind in surprise. We exchange a look before Morgan runs up after her. I have no choice but to go too. The regret is almost instant. Cold knives pierce my lungs with each heavy breath. I'm not in the best shape to begin with, and the snow and boots don't make things any easier. The only consolation is that we're running in a straight line, so it won't be hard to follow our path back. Every so often, we pause to catch our breath. The pace is catching up to Tara, too, who had to fight to keep her smile on. Morgan seems unfazed by it all. I'm about three seconds away from demanding that we give up when I see it. Way off in the distance, too far to identify the source, is a light. It sparkles and it glimmers like a star that fell to Earth. Ooh. I fall silent, the words stolen from my mouth. Then Tara points, stating what I already know. There it is. Buoyed by her second wind, Tara runs off again. This time, Morgan and I are close behind. We follow the light, which sometimes blinks out, but soon reappears. I'm too focused on not slipping or falling to give much thought as to the source. There's no telling how long or how far we've been going. Somehow, the light never seems to get any closer or farther away. It's like it's running from us. Or maybe it's trying to lead you somewhere. Hey, wait up! Tara yells out into the darkness. If whatever it is can understand her, it ignores her. Running is quickly becoming difficult. My lungs burn from the cold, and my breathing turns ragged after a minute. Tara pulls farther and farther ahead for Morgan to be. Her one-track mind fixated on the light. After a bit longer, I hit my limit, and my pace slows back to a walk, and then a stop. I fold over, hands on my knees, as I gasp for breath. Morgan crunches to a stop just ahead, too, turning back towards me. Are you alright? I try to respond, but I'm breathing too heavy to be able to talk. I just wave my hand, gesturing for Morgan to go on ahead without me, but she doesn't. Are you sure? I force myself to stand and nod. Um, fine. In the murk, Tara becomes a disembodied light herself, only the flashlight glow visible. I watch it bounce to a halt and then slowly make its way back towards us. You guys give up too easy. How are you not dead? I haven't seen you run in years. That's because you never hit the gym with me. I don't know if she's poking, I mean, joking or not, but I'm too worn out to care. So, what was that thing? Do you think it was your forest spirit? Morgan's eyes widen. You believe me? Tara shrugs. I'm considering it, at least. I mean, what else could it have been? Fairies. Morgan says it very nonchalantly. I side-eyed Tara, who's very interested in her boots. The forest spirits, the forest spirit doesn't really make a light like that, at least not that I'm aware of. Right, that makes sense. Sure it does. 
Doesn't it, Matt? It was probably someone from the village. But as I say it, I know how unlikely that is. The way the light seemed to always maintain a precise distance was unnatural. I can feel the seeds of doubt beginning to sow in my heart. But it was definitely strange. Tara looks at me with more pride than a rainbow flag. <laughs> I love that. Respect. Hey, holy shit. That's practically canon in Maddie terms. I roll my eyes, but it's partially just for show. I'm curious, at the very least. I wouldn't call myself a believer as much as Tara wishes. But that's two strange things so far, which is two more than I expected when I boarded the train out here. It was strange. That's as much as I'll get. A yawn overtakes me in the middle of speaking. It doesn't help the pain in my lungs. Oh. Guess it's past your bedtime, huh? I kick some snow at her and it bounces uselessly off her pants. With the way we've been bantering with each other, it really does feel a bit more like old times. Oh, that's good. Make that three strange things on this trip so far. We should begin heading back, anyways. We can't go much further before I'd be lost, too. You still know where we are. Yes, of course. We'd be in trouble if not. Obviously. She has a point. I got so caught up in chasing the light, I lost track of which direction we come from. I'll show you around more tomorrow. There's something you might like to see. Yeah, what is it? A surprise. We'll go tomorrow before it gets dark. It's a bit of a walk. Does it have to do with whatever the light was? I have no idea. It's possible. Story of my life, I know, right? <laughs> okay, well, we'll call it quits for tonight and pick up tomorrow. Yeah, I guess. That's fine by me. Great. She hops forward and then pauses. Uh, I guess you ought to lead the way. Morgan smiles as she does just that. Doesn't that look toasty? It takes us only 15 minutes or so to reach the cabin. We must have added a lot of time to our trip with all that wandering we did. Warren bids us a farewell at the door, which I barely return before stumbling inside. That looks nice. I'm halfway out of my boots by the time Tara's inside. Guess you're not staying up late then. I'm out like a light the second I hit the bed. Tara grins just briefly. Right. My hand is on the doorknob when Tara clears her throat. Hey, thanks for, you know, chasing after that thing. I appreciate you playing along. My hand lingers on the door, poised to turn. Yeah, of course. Let's see what we find tomorrow. Right, yeah, right. Good night. Night. I step quickly in and out and shut my bedroom door before Tara can say anything else. As I switch off the lights and crawl into bed, I remember the end of the train ride here. I felt the same just now, standing there not knowing what to say. It would be so easy. I banished the thoughts from my mind and wrenched my eyes shut. There'll be time to worry about it tomorrow. I have time to think. We have a month. As I slowly drift off to sleep, the exhaustion that I feel winning out over the stress, the last thoughts I have are dancing lights in the snow. Hey again, everyone. Tara's busy, so it's just me this time. That's probably just as well, because at this point in the game... I'm keeping a pretty big secret from her. <laughs> We've launched into the main plot by now, so I'll tr keep the summary brief. Long story short, I found a ghost and Tara doesn't know about it. Since she's busy investigating with Morgan, I'm taking some time to get to know the ghost girl on my own. 
I'll tell her eventually, I promise. It's just nice to have something that you can just call your sometimes, you know? Well, since she's not doing this intro, I guess I have two things of my own now. I really am living the high life. Alrighty, we're going to stop here. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel when the new videos come out. And I'll see you next time when we learn more about the ghost girl. That should be fun. I'm interested to meet Abby. But that happens next time. Until then, peace out everyone.